very good morning dear students i hope all of you are fine and safe at your home so this is subject economics we are discussing chapter number 1 that is graphs in economics and this will be our lecture number 2 in previous session we discussed about the introductory part of the graphs how it is useful in our routine life how the different types of pictures that is graphs and diagrams will be useful in awareness and giving understanding to the lay person and how it is useful in showing or in explaining the different types of statistical information also in previous session we discussed that basically these graphs are divided into two parts this chapter is also divided into two parts in first part we will discuss everything about the graphs and diagrams which are useful in economics and statistical studies while in second portion we will discuss about the technological use in economics that is the use of internet technology and the use of computer technology along with data cd so first of all i request you to please take one fair book or rough book and pen with you because once when we completed this particular topic of diagram and graph and basic understanding of this two we'll start a difference between diagram and graph which is also based on this textual information so we'll try to divide or to compare these two things because in previous examinations it ask as a dip, give the difference between diagram and graph in even 3 marks and as i said in previous sessions that when in any of the difference it is asked for 3 marks then you have to write minimum 4 points and if it is asked for 5 marks then you have to write minimum 6 points of that particular topic so today once when we complete this basic understanding of diagram and graph then we will move forward the difference that is prepared very carefully so that all the language of this textbook is used so that it becomes easy and i also request you to please whenever you are reading different type of questions or whenever you are answering a questions of your worksheet or exercise please try to complete that question from textbook itself first of all find that question from the textbook if you are not able to find it then please ask me so that i can show you where that question is but don't write anything from the reference book itself or as it is given in a reference book because basically the board is following a textbook pattern only and whenever they are checking it is obvious that when any of the paper checker is going for a checking a paper then board will provide them a perfect answer sheet of that question paper which is prepared by board and it is obvious that when board is issuing a textbook then they will focus on textbook only so all the answers will be prepared from textbook itself so whenever you are giving any kind of answer please use the language of textbook only it means that whenever you are writing at least 80 to 90% will be matching with your textbook and your own language or own words will be allowed up to 10 to 20% only so if you have purchased a reference book then don't worry you will use it as a reference like if there is any kind of question is give, given in worksheet or in exercise book and you are not able to understand the question or you are not able to understand that where the answer is please use that reference book and find out the answer from your textbook also by that way you can use reference book but don't mug up or learn everything from the reference book i have seen almost different 5 to 6 types of publications which are publishing the reference book for standard 12th 
but their language is also very difficult than in language of a textbook and their content is also very high or we can say very lengthy while the board is not requiring that much lengthy content in your answers so please be careful and try to prepare everything from your textbook itself now let us start today's lecture with the first point that is diagram in previous session we discussed that there are two types of pictures are drawn in economics and they are diagram and graph first one is a diagram diagram is a representation of observable data by way of picture scales and measurements are used while drawing a diagram though thorough knowledge of statistics is not required to draw a diagram is drawn for data which are presented in discrete frequency distribution in other words a diagram drawn is drawn for self explanatory data and lay persons do not require detailed knowledge of statistics in order to draw or understand a diagram a diagram is used by advertising companies to draw attention by the government to provide information and by social organization to spread awareness so it is all about a diagram now let us discuss each and every point see from your examination point of view also these two points that is graph and diagram is utmost important because if you check in previous six papers then almost five times the questions related to graph and diagram is asked in it sometimes it may ask in one mark that what is diagram or what is graph or sometimes they ask that give the difference between diagram and graph in two marks sometimes they ask that give the example of graph and diagram which is given on page number 2 so you have to prepare this question by heart for your examination purpose now let us start the diagram diagram is a representation of observable data by way of picture basically in standard 11 in chapter number 1 we learned that the presentation of information can be done in three ways first one is through descriptive data which we are uh, reading right now second one is by data table and third one is by way of picture so here the diagram is the representation of observable data which is prepared on a table by way of picture it means they are trying to draw the diagram from the data table and which is useful for the further studies and analysis scales and measurements are used while drawing a diagram so it is obviously that whenever you are drawing a diagram or a graph scales and measurement that is proper scale that is proper distance between two diagram and everything is or proper distance between two bars or distance between pi or time series everything is required whether you are drawing a diagram or a graph though thorough knowledge of statistics is not required to draw say for example if we want to draw a diagram of demand curve then there is not at all requirement of statistical knowledge in it because these are very simple diagram whether you are drawing a diagram of a demand that is law of demand or law of supply or behavior of cost in all these three data only the basic data can be converted into diagram without a single help of statistical information so it is okay that if you if you are not compatible with the knowledge of mean median mode and standard deviation and variance and everything then also you can draw and understand the diagram so we can say then thorough knowledge of statistics is not required to draw and understand the diagram next a diagram is drawn for data which are presented in discrete frequency contribution distribution see 
there are two types of data in statistics also like whenever the data given as simple as it is seen like there is a inverse relationship between price and demand so whenever price increasing demand decreases so at 1 rupees the demand will be 5 unit now as price increases from 1 rupees to 2 rupees then demand decreases from 5 unit to 4 unit when price increases to 2 rupees to 3 rupees then demand decreases by from 4 to 3 so this simple information which is given in a data table can be easily drawn with the help of diagram in diagram basically we are using two quadrant on vertical it is x axis and on horizontal sorry on horizontal it is x axis and on vertical it is y axis so basically while drawing a law of demand in y axis we are representing a price and on x axis we are representing a demand now with the, the help of proper scale and measurement on price you can also show from 1 2 3 4 and 5 and on demand 1 2 3 4 and 5 now connecting the x axis with y axis that is at the price of 5 rupees only one unit is demanded at the price of 4 rupees two unit is demanded at the price of 3 rupees three unit and once all this point is properly mentioned then a simple line which connecting all this point will be drawn and that is called demand curve so in interpretation or drawing or understanding not at all any requirement of statistical information is there it means anyone can draw a diagram without the help of statistical knowledge now this type of data that is the data of price and demand is a very simple and it is a discontinuous frequency distribution whenever a simple data is given it is discontinuous and whenever there is a range between two is given then it is a continuous frequency distribution so here we can say that diagram is useful to draw the data which are presented in discrete that is discontinuous frequency distribution in other words a diagram is drawn for self explanatory data and a lay person do not require detailed knowledge of statistics in draw order to draw or understand the diagram discontinuous frequency distribution means data which is self explanatory whenever there is a data table of demand and price is given or price and supply is given then from the observation of this data table you can easily understand and interpret that these are self explanatory data like whenever price increases demand decreases you can simply watch and understand it from the data table itself so there is not at all requirement of any statistical information and that's why in diagram basically we are using discrete frequency distribution or self explanatory data now this type of self explanatory data is very easy to understand and that's why lay person do not require detailed knowledge of statistics in order to draw or understand a diagram whenever we are showing a normal diagram of a law of demand then it will become a very easy for any of the lay person who even not compatible with the knowledge of economics and statistics then also we can easily explain or he or she can easily understand the data which is self explanatory and for that the diagram is drawn a diagram is now who are using a diagram so basically a diagram is used by advertising companies to draw attention basically whenever advertising companies wants to show its sales growth or profit percentage or number of customers they are using a diagram like in 2015 we sold 2 lakh units while in 2016 we sold 4 lakh unit 
in 2017 we sold 7 lakh units so year by year our sales revenue is increasing which can be easily drawn or explained with the help of diagram itself whenever by the government to provide information whenever government wants to show the different type of information like number of persons infected with the covid sorry by the covid or number of person die or number of person recovered each and every information can be easily drawn and explained with the help of diagram and social organization to spread awareness that is the number of toilets in the initial years of the independence and now the availability of number of toilets number of poverty or poor people's number of unemployment etc this kind of self-explanatory data can be easily shown with the help of diagram so it is all about diagram i hope you understand each and everything now let us start the point number two that is graph graph a graph is also a representation of observable data by way of a picture but a graph is drawn for statistical information which is not self-explanatory a graph is drawn for data with continuous frequency distribution in order to simplify such data use of statistical tool is made a graph is also drawn for other types of complex or unclear statistical information thorough knowledge of statistics is essential to draw and understand a graph a graph can extend over one or more of the four quadrants obtained by the intersection of x and y axis on a plane and it cannot be drawn without taking appropriate measurement a graph is generally drawn on a graph paper graphs are used more by researchers and educationists graphs are not used for conveying information to general public that is lay person so basically from this information we come to conclusion that graph which is something very difficult or different than a diagram for from a first instance the graph and diagram will be looking same but when we are understanding it in a deeper sense then we will try to or we able to understand that there is a vast difference between a graph and a diagram first line is similar in both the cases that why we are not taking in it in any of the different session or we can say in difference also so graph is also a representation of the observable data by way of picture same as a diagram but a graph is drawn for statistical information which is not self-explanatory it means the graph is totally based on statistics and a statistical information which are given not in a simple term but in a normal observations only we have to use different types of tools and methods to make it self-explanatory or to a frequency distribution from which we can draw a graph let us take one example so in statistics also first of all the two type of observation is given that is x and y from that you have to find out the x bar and y bar and sigma xi and yi and by that you can get some different type of information and from that information you can draw a graph so it is not at all easy first of all to understand a graph and secondly it the compulsory knowledge of statistical is required for drawing a graph because the data which is given here is not self-explanatory but you have to make them proper in a way so that you can draw a proper graph 
so a graph is drawn for statistical information which is not self explanatory while the diagram is drawn for the information which is self explanatory next one is a graph is drawn for data with continuous frequency distribution while in diagram we discussed that diagram is drawn for discrete or discontinuous frequency distribution see here i am taking both these points simultaneously because by that way you will be able to understand the difference between these two we are going to discuss the difference in a detailed manner and separately then also it becomes very easy to understand and to remember different point so diagram is used for discontinuous frequency distribution while graph is used for continuous frequency distribution in order to simplify such data that is the continuous frequency data is given in a different form it is not self explanatory like the data of demand and supply it is somewhat difficult to understand so in order to simplify such data use of statistical tool is made that is by the way of mean median or mod or standard deviation we can simplify the data and from that data we can draw the graph not like the way we are drawing a diagram because in diagram we are using basically a self explanatory data which is given as it is while in graph the data which is given is not self explanatory and it is somewhat difficult to understand so first of all by the use of different tools and methods we make them simplified and from that simplified data we can draw a graph next one a graph is also drawn for other types of complex or unclear statistical information basically the graph is used maximum in statistics so along with this type of pre continuous frequency distribution other unclear statistical information which is very difficult or we can say complex like the different percentage of different students in a classroom then their average and everything so this type of data where there is a no proper class or no proper frequency is given for that type of data also the graph is used because in any of the situation first of all we have to make this data as simplified data and from that we can draw a graph thorough knowledge of statistical is essential to draw and understand a graph remember in diagram thorough knowledge of statistics is not at all required to diagram a, to draw a diagram but when you want to draw a graph complete knowledge of statistical data is essential because without the help of statistical data you are not at all able to draw a graph a graph can extend over one or more of the four quadrants obtained by the intersection of a x and y axis on a plane so basically whenever we are drawing a diagram the exit left corner point is zero vertical line uh, above zero is positive that is y axis but vertical line below zero is negative that is y bar or sorry we can say y dash while the horizontal line that is right from the zero is positive that is x axis and left from the zero is negative by this way we can draw four quadrant that is x and x dash y and y dash while zero is it at middle so you can extend the graph into any four quadrant like not only y but you can extend the graph to y bar all, sorry y dash also same way from x to x dash also while in diagram we are using the only two quadrant that is x and y so here a graph can extend over one or more of the four quadrants obtained by the intersection of x and y axis on a 
plan means on a plan paper and it cannot be drawn without taking appropriate measurement as you all knows that in statistics also you required a proper measurement in diagram with the use of simplified scales and measurement you can draw but in graph you required proper and exact scales and measurement by that way you can draw the diagram sorry graph so a graph can be extended over any four any of the four quadrant and it cannot be drawn without taking appropriate measurement because there will be a perfect relationship between independent and dependent data and that can be established by the way of graph only so that proper or appropriate measurement is very much required next para a graph is generally drawn on a graph paper while you if you want to draw a diagram it can be drawn simply in your rough book or in your fair book or in a plain paper also but for drawing a graph when you have to take a proper measurement you generally required a graph paper graphs are used more by now the last point is about who are using graph so graphs are used more by researchers and educationist because they required a very extendable data with the continuous frequency and that's why different types of researchers who are researches on different different topics and educationist are using graph more and graphs are not used for conveying information to general public because without the proper knowledge of statistical information no one is able to even draw and understand a graph in that case whenever if we are showing this graph to a layman that is a common man then he or she is not at all able to understand the graph because they are not compatible with the proper information of statistics or we can say they are not having a knowledge of statistics that's why graphs are never used for conveying information to general public that is to a lay person so here with this point we have completed both the basic detail of diagram and graph now let us understand the examples of data with discrete or we can say a discontinuous frequency distribution which are self explanatory it means it this type of data is very easy to understand remember in your examinations if in a one mark the question will be asked from diagram and graph then they will ask that explain the graph or explain the diagram in that you can simply write down that it is a observable data which can be draw with the help of a picture one simple line will be able to give full marks but sometimes in two marks they are asking that give the example of data of discrete frequency distribution and then at that time you have to take some hypothetical data based on your knowledge and you have to give example like this so here in your textbook both the data that is the example of data with discontinuous and here second one is the example of data with continuous frequency distribution is given first of all let us take the example of data with discrete or discontinuous frequency distribution so here in table 1.1 we will be having simply the price and demand there is inverse relationship between price and demand so whenever price increases demand decreases it can be seen from the table itself that when the price is rupees 1 demand was 100 when price increases to 5 demand reduce to 70 and when price increases to 10 demand fall to 10 so here with this particular data table we can easily show that it is a self explanatory data and from that data we can easily draw a diagram now let us take the example of data with continuous frequency distribution if any of the students is not able to understand the difference between continuous and 
this discontinuous sorry continuous and discontinuous frequency distribution then they have to remember that whenever the class or frequency between two variable is given then it is always continuous frequency distribution like in table 1.2 will be having the income class that is 10000 to 20000 while the number of people that is frequency is given as 500 from 10000 to 20000 500 people are there from 20000 to 30000 300 and from 30000 to 40000 100 people are there while in table 1.3 the different class that is 10 to 19 20 to 29 and 30 to 39 is the class of marks and number of students is 50 30 and 10 respectively so with the help of this two example you will be easily understanding or you will be easily understand that which are the type of discrete or discontinuous frequency distribution and which are the example of data with continuous frequency distribution based on this two information you have to prepare different examples of discontinuous and continuous frequency distribution on your own or you may remember or may mug up any of these two tables for the continuous and one table for discontinuous frequency distribution so here with this example we are concluding our session over here today we are not able to differentiate between the graph and diagram which we will do on next lecture itself but today we have completed the basic understanding of graph basic understanding of diagram and the example of discrete conti- discontinuous frequency distribution and continuous frequency distribution have a nice day and thank you very much class